Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for you all. In this video, we're going to continue our look at painting the Warhammer Quest Silver Tower box set models, and we're going to continue our look at painting the Fire Slayer Doomseeker. In this video, we're going to work on the little jade elements that are on the model, such as on his little uh, staff with the little curved blade on top, as well as the little face icon that is on the top of his helmet. To get us started, we're going to be using some Abaddon Black, and this is just to re-establish the base black tone on the little uh, feather thing details that are coming off his helmet. I don't know what those little details are. They look like little feathers, or maybe flames. Either way, they're getting a base coat of bl uh, black, as well as the uh, faces themselves on both the helmet and the staff, as those are primarily just uh, primer sitting there. So we're going to give them a nice uh, base coat of gr um, Abaddon Black as well. Give us a nice smooth base tone to work from. As you can see here, we're also going to paint the little uh, icon at the end of his uh, of that little staff as well, and that curved blade on the back of the uh, of the staff. Uh, I also do paint it in uh, in the jade coloring as well because it seems like it's kind of attached to the head, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to do something a little bit different there. Anyway, again, just to kind of differ from the rest of the box art as uh, we've kind of worked our way through this game. Inky My Darkness is next, and this is going to be our first little highlight color onto these areas. And basically, we're just going to uh, paint this into about, uh, about two thirds of each of the little surface areas that we are going to paint. Uh, so that for these little uh, feathers on the helmet, uh, it's about two thirds of the way down, leaving a little bit of black at the bottom. The little face icon, again, the cheeks are pretty much covered up. The tongue that kind of runs down to the center of the helmet uh, gets primarily painted as well. The forehead and the brow, they are pretty much uh, left with just like a little bit of a black line in the crease as well as the staff as well as painted in the same way. It's kind of a same kind of looking staff face on the staff as well. And the little icon at the bottom is a little bit trickier uh, as it's kind of a three dimensional kind of rune kind of shape. And so it's kind of tricky on how to do that. And so basically I just kind of highlighted the bottom end of the J of the, the symbol itself and you know kind of work the color from that way the curved blade on the back of the staff i simply just kind of did that in sort of a non-metallic metal kind of effect i do the uppermost porch portion of the end of the curvature and then do the uppermost portion of the big part of the curvature uh so you can see, kind of see there it's just like the end point is just highlighted on the one side and the uppermost portion on the other side is highlighted as well Stegadon Scale Green is next, and this is going to be about halfway through the color. Uh, we're going to, going to begin doing a little bit of edging on some portions, but otherwise this is just about uh, halfway through what we had done previously with the Incubi Darkness. And so again, we're just going to be catching some of the high points. And there's really two ways you could have done, you can go about doing this kind of jade effect. You can either do it um, with the highlights at the bottom portion of each of the little facets, such as the bottom of the cheek, the bottom of the forehead, uh, you know, the bottom of the brow, um, you know, the bottom of the tongue, and then kind of gone for like you know the translucent effect. But here I just kind of went with just pretty much as a it's a solid kind of a jade kind of stone. It's an obsidian. Who knows? It's some sort of mystical stone that they're working with. It's you know. Again, it's Age of Sigmar, so who knows what they're doing. But again, here we simply see, we're just simply following the highlights again, just laying in, just in behind the Incubi Darkness. Here you can see I'm painting just the tip of that portion, and then I'll do a little edge highlight just along the blade edge there. And again, I'll catch that top portion of that blade, as you can see there, bringing it just to the end of the curvature, leaving that bottom portion black. Temple Guard Blue is next. This is going to be a little edge highlighting around the areas. You can see simply here, we're catching just some little rivets and then begin this little edge highlighting on points. And basically we're highlighting both edges. Again, kind of going for a bit of that non-metallic metal look, but not quite. Uh, again, we're not going for, you know, anything in particular. Uh, it's just, you know, really, really kind of fine highlights. Again, some kind of stones that are, have a translucent effect, they often will illuminate towards the light source and some that are really kind of a, a clear kind of like you know like regular kind of gemstones that we do they'll have the light kind of emanating to the bottom portions of each of the little points and so it's really where you, how you imagine this kind of jade is it kind of that you know that smoky kind of quality kind of jade or is it that perfectly crystal clear kind of thing and so or even obsidian because again this is really kind of heavily black as well and so we, we could even have done this as obsidian and even done it in different colors as well 
Again, you can see it's just really quickly just putting an edge highlight on a lot of these little points, bring a lot of visual interest. And again, we're working with these colors here, this nice blue and turquoise blue, uh, again, it plays really nicely with the orange of the model, the orange and red of the model. And so it really kind of makes these points, even though we've only laid out just a little bit of the color onto the model, you can already see how well it already stands out against the model itself. Again, just following our little previous steps as before, just giving a little edge highlight here and there. Really, really tiny. Not a whole lot of color laid out. And again, you can see how it really just kind of brightens up the whole thing. Next is Baharoth Blue. I'm slap a little bit of this onto the palette. No thinners needed for this color as it runs pretty thin. And again, we're just catching just the tips of some of the areas. Again, kind of doing almost like a spot highlight almost on some of these areas really just a tiny little dot here and there just kind of go around kind of just giving us that uh, that idea that there's you know, a little spot highlight a little bit of an illumination uh, hitting these points and so again giving us that kind of jade kind of quality to the model giving us kind of that gemstone kind of rare earth gemstone who knows right I mean it's, it's also gonna work for well for like obsidian and anything like that where you don't have to go for a completely completely translucent type of effect We've got even more painted tutorials in the Silver Mini Wargaming Vault. You can watch another one today about how I paint the weapons of this guy. Just click on the video link in the description below. Watch it right now. If you don't have a Mini Wargaming Vault membership, you can click on the link and sign up for a free 7-day trial. Make sure that you get the Silver membership so you can access the painted tutorials. And you get instant access to over a thousand painted tutorials already in the vault. And so thank you for watching. Happy Wargaming.